Welcome to Sunday Showcase on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. From Halifax, Nova Scotia. And from England, of course. Those other colonies to the south of us never did catch on. I know. Regardless, you're listening to the Sonic Society, the world's largest and longest-running showcase of modern audio drama. I'm Jack Ward, and this is episode 712. We hope this day finds you all happy and healthy and not hungover, or maybe, and enjoying a quiet day listening to audio drama. Whatever else would anyone want to do? I know, Jack, but there are many households with many traditions. Indeed there are, David. And wherever you are, whatever you're up to, we hope you're well and safe because this week... We have a barn burner of a holiday event. That's very true. This week we have parts one and two of The Adventures of Mrs. Claus from Last Act Radio. And the space adventures of the world's most secretive action hero begin right here. On the Sonic Society. Welcome to Last Act Theatre Company's first radio play, Evil Wears a Green Dress, a Mrs. Claus story. I'm Greg, writer and director. And I'm Mindy, producer. What began as an idea about what if Mrs. Claus spends all year flying around space, getting into adventures and being an all-around rough-and-tumble badass, has evolved into a zany space romp with lasers, alien crystals, and hyper-intelligent polar bears. We here at Last Act couldn't be happier with the results, and we want to thank you for your purchase of this production. Your support helps us to pay our super-talented cast and crew, and will allow us to continue to put out projects like this in the future. Stay tuned to lastacttheater.com for updates on upcoming shows and to get signed up for our mailing list. Our 2018 season will bring to the stage the regional premiere of A Real Boy by Stephen Kaplan. This satiric play tells the story of two marionette puppets with a human child who starts growing strings of his own and the kindergarten teacher who takes it upon herself to save him. This will be performed August 12th through September 1st at the Trinity Street Theater. And now, without any further delay... Here is Last Act Theater's Evil Wears a Green Dress, a Mrs. Claus story. Enjoy. Episode 1, Beautiful Star of Bethlehem. Dateline, the North Pole. While good boys and girls wait anxiously for Santa Claus to bring them toys, someone else is waiting anxiously, Santa himself, staring into the void, waiting for his wife to come home. What follows, dear listener, is one of the many adventures of Mrs. Claus, galactic globetrotter, space swashbuckler, and hero of the Milky Way. The legend of Mrs. Claus is known throughout the galaxy, from Io to Beetlejuice to Vergon 6. Everywhere, coincidentally, except a certain Class 5 planet where she makes her home, which the inhabitants call Earth. Her philanthropic husband has generated a legend of his own while there, but that's another story for another time. This story is about Mrs. Claus while aboard Rosie, a cherry red spacecraft that looks remarkably like a Victorian era sleigh. With her as always as Lyric, a spunky orphaned girl she saved from a raid of Talron Ravagers, and Kuma, a hyper intelligent polar bear. While Santa is busy during the year making toys and checking his many lists, Mrs. Claus traverses the galaxy, righting wrongs, fighting villains, or sampling the newest cuisine on ECALB 525. It's now late December, and Mrs. Claus hasn't returned in several days. Santa had an agreement that one day a year he would take Rosie out to fulfill his santa duties, and that day was quickly approaching. But all he can do is wait, sipping cocoa as he looks up at the stars. <clears throat> uh, Santa? Well, ho, ho, ho there, Bippy. I have the reports from the doll assembly line. We've met monthly quota, even taking standard naughty nice deviation into consideration. Same for model trains, toy soldiers, and yo-yos. I've been assured the rocking horses will be ready EOD tomorrow. Bag prep can begin shortly thereafter. Oh, thank you, Bippy. I know everybody's working hard right now. (laughs) Yes, sir. In fact, hard enough that you could afford to take a short rest, if I may speak freely, that is. Of course. (laughs) And thank you, Bippy. After all these years, I'm still a bit nervous around the 11th hour. And a bit worried, I suppose. She'll come home, sir. She always does. 
That'll be all, Bippy. Yes, sir. Looking up, Santa notices a star growing closer, blazing across the horizon. Mrs. Claus is home again, and Santa hurries to greet her. The arrival of Mrs. Claus is always an event at the North Pole, and her team of elves would already be there, tending to any need Mrs. Claus had post-mission, which were often many. Wading through a sea of pointy hats, Santa attempts to get her attention as she walks and talks. Oh, feels good to be out of that ship. Jacko, Lulu, report. Hello, dear. Yes, Mrs. Claus? Can you check the aft couplings on Rosie? They felt a little loose on our way in. And be sure to refuel and detail her, the usual. We took a few laser blasts to the hull. Nothing you can't buff out. Oh, and spray down those seats, too. Find the strongest solvents you have. Use fire, if you must. Right away, ma'am. Lyric, keep an eye on them. And double-check that coupling link once they finish. Righto! <laughs> oh, hey, Pops! Watch your step around, Kuma. She's a capital P. You. Whoa! Oh, 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 Kuma! Kuma! Bath! Stat! That Fangian slime doesn't wash off once it dries, and I don't want to have to shave you. <laughs> don't give me that! I know you can smell you, too. Honey! What? Oh, sorry. Hello, Santa. Looks like you three were pretty busy. Just thwarting another supervillain's evil plan? Conquer this, kidnap that, plunge the galaxy into chaos. <laughs> you know, it doesn't feel like a Tuesday. Well, it's actually Thursday. And right now, all I want is to get out of these boots, soak my feet and pour an eggnog and bourbon. Hold the eggnog. Uh, there's one thing. Oh, there is one thing. Where's Poe? Poe! I left a green velvet box in the console. You may need to dig deep. The dimensional interface is still active, so for God's sakes, don't fall in. Be a dear and take it to quarantine. Don't worry. It's safe as long as you don't open it. So don't open it. Okay. One more thing after that. What's that, dear? Well, it's December 19th. Yes? Five days from now, you know... Right. Christmas. Eve? You're cutting it close this year. Like I do every year. And like every year, I'm here with time to spare. Yes, but... Hold on. I have to take this. Hello, Jacques? Yes, of course I got an okay. You're talking to me, aren't you? Yes, I suppose this could be a ploy by the Atraxian interrogators to give up your position. They do say sarcasm is one of the cruelest torture tactics. <laughs> uh, of course, I'm kidding. God, why must you people be so literal? That was a rhetorical qu- Never mind. What do you need? That's a lot of royal pollocks. When do they need it? Uh, sorry, can't do it. That conflicts with the one day I let Chris take Rosie out. Yes, I understand this puts you in the kingdom's crowning day festivities in a bind. But you don't understand that there is one day. One day in the whole Terran calendar of 365 that is off limits. And every year you act like this is news. No, I don't care one of your orbits is equal to seven of ours. I don't know, called UPS. That's a joke, Jack. I'm sorry, honey. It's okay. I was just saying that, and I heard you on the phone. I need to start getting ready for Christmas. I just got home. Can you give me a minute? Of course. Thank you. It's just... I, I've i had plenty of minutes here waiting. Kringle, I'm home, okay? Like I said... Rosie's all yours now. I'm getting her prepped and detailed. Lyric and the elves will give her a thorough inspection, as they always do. And you'll have your night, as you always do, to help all the good boys and girls. Oh, you're trivializing me again. I'm not trivializing you. I'm just stating and tired from saving the galaxy again. Ever hear of the Scarlet Jade? No. No. And you never will, thanks to me. Sorry if this causes long nights here for you, but you also know this is what I do. Yes, 
would be a whole lot easier to just stay up here in this igloo of solitude, spying on kids while they sleep. Oh, that's not fair. Neither is this mess your elves leave in the unisex bathroom. But let's talk about that black and white naughty or nice bit that encourages a culture of fear in six-year-olds. I'm not here to teach six-year-olds semantics. Have I told you about the starving people of Nablonia I fed with 35 tons of food I liberated from a Zoran freighter? Did I take this food legally? According to the rules of the most despotic regime in the cluster, yes. But this food will help feed thousands of people as they endure the longest, darkest, coldest part of their two-sun orbit. Who's naughty and who's nice in this scenario? Oh, that's different. Is it? <sighs> this is silly. I just got home and here we are bickering. I'm sorry, sweetie. I guess I'm still on edge. Plus, I had to smell Kuma all the way home after she got herself nearly digested by a Fangian weeping fern. <laughs> I know you mean well, and I can only imagine what it must be like here all alone. Wondering every time you speed off, it'll be the last time I see you. But I'm here now, and we have five days to curl up in bed together before you go make this world a better place. Well, I'll have to be on the factory floor quite a bit to make sure we're ready to go. Of course, but not all the time, right? Now let's get a drink in the study as I take these boots off. Sit back, relax, and I'll tell you where I just came from. Because you're right. I am gone all the time, and you're right, it probably isn't fair, but I'm right when I say the galaxy needs me. Okay. I just wish I felt needed sometimes. And I do need you. These boots are hell to get off alone. <laughs> <laughs> so... Tell me more about this Scarlet Jade. I thought you three were going off to look at uh, flowers, right? That's right. The Andromeda Lily Festival. They're having an exhibit on phosphorescent blooms that are some of the only ones in the sector. And Lyric had really been on me to go. Uh, I can't find anything except that Federation-sanctioned talk show. And bar. No, thank you. Where are the CDs? <laughs> We'll listen to that next, promise. There was one song I really wanted to hear first. Hello? It's a surprise! Otherwise, I know you'd turn it off. Yes, you make me feel like I've been locked out of heaven. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, uh, what gives? Trust me, I did that for your safety and my well-being. <laughs> <laughs> mm, fine. I can't wait to check out those lilies. They say you can see beyond the visible spectrum when they bloom. Think we can take one home? They're a protected species. Yeah, but don't you have, like, diplomatic immunity on a galactic scale? Imagine how one of those would look blooming underneath the northern lights. We'll see what I can do. You got an incoming on the Ansible, Mrs. C. It's flashing the, uh, bad color. This is Mrs. Claus. Slow down, your highness. This what? When did this happen? Okay, are you still in your room? Good, good. Stay put and don't open it for anyone until we get there. That was Princess Nero from Arsonia. Her kingdom is under attack. She wasn't sure who or how many, but she's holed up in her room. For now. Oh, but the flower. Can wait. This is a distress call. I'm punching in the coordinates. Stop in for FTL jump in five, four, three, you two, You said it every one. time. Don't forget to breathe out. Scanning the Orsonian surface. Nothing on the comms. Just silence. Maybe the crisis is over. They canceled the distress call and they're all done for a nap. <laughs> mm, one way to find out. I'm bringing her in low. As Mrs. Claus dropped into atmosphere, the rolling green hills of Orsonia below were barren. What is normally a bustling agricultural community on the outskirts of Castle Provenza is eerily silent. This town is coming like a ghost town. 
Where is everybody? Think they're all inside? I doubt it. Look, farming tools just left in the field. No, whatever happened here happened in a hurry. I just hope wherever they are, they're somewhere safe. And not in the belly of some monster that's lain dormant for centuries, just waiting to wake up and gobble all the bad boys and girls. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> yeah, with gnarly teeth and crazy long claws. <laughs> of course we could take it. I mean, we sent that Neptunian ice sink back into whatever little snow fort it crawled out of. Remember that? I was like, pew, 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 pew. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> Ice Snake! I thought you guys were visiting a friend in the Toron system. We got sidetracked. Again. It's kind of a common occurrence. Just how common? Do you want me to keep telling this story? Versus the one with the Ice Snake? You want me to choose? <laughs> anyway, Kuma and Lyric were goofing off, as usual. Knock it off, you two! No, something is definitely wrong here. Look, it's not just the people, it's the livestock, pets, or heck, even the birds. There's nothing. Let's take her down at the castle gates. <laughs> Good point, they do look locked. I don't think anyone will mind if we park right in front of the main hall. Lyric. Sorry. Keep your eyes open and weapons ready. I don't like this. There's no one here. And this place is huge. Even full of people, this hall would still be impressive. The Arsonians are one of the more recent additions to the Federation. Still liked keeping the Gothic architecture, though. Well, Gothic to us. We should pass the Hall of Portraits if you want to take a look at them. Whoa, these are the Arsonians? These portraits date back 800 years to Darnock the Great. This is Cosimo IV, sovereign when first contact was made. They look like skinny purple marshmallows. <laughs> Lavender is purple. Don't be fooled by their soft exterior. It's allowed them to withstand the harshest of interstellar environments. Their epidermal tissue is comprised of a resilient, spongy material that adapts to most atmospheres and gravities. Fascinating! And delicious! Marshmallows! <laughs> Whoa! Check out this one! The huge wall piece? Is it some kind of battle? The Tintiniburian Uprising! One of the bloodiest days in Orsodian history... It was the deciding battle in the fight for planetary unity, and one of the main reasons they now find their place among the stars. And in the corner, what's that little red ship raining hellfire down among, I hope, the bad guys? Oh, oh <laughs> yeah. I may have had a hand in it. The king and I went way back. Mrs. Claus, you scamp! Does Mr. Claus know he wasn't your first marshmallow? It wasn't like that. Sure it wasn't. It's okay, I'm not one to kiss and tell either. Okay, there was that one time. Okay, fine, I am one to kiss and tell. Sue me, I live amongst elves and not even the haughty Legolas ones. Where is everyone? I don't know... The throne room is empty, too. Quick, let's get to the princess's chambers. Maybe she's still holed up there. Princess, are you in there? Princess, we're here to save you. I hope they didn't turn it into a s'more. It's locked. Uh, princess, if you're in there, we're coming in, so stand back. Kuma, do your thing. <laughs> princess, there's no one here. Under the bed? Behind the curtain? Or in her closet. Man, she has some nice dresses. So what happened? Were we too late? I don't know. Something doesn't feel right. Um, Mrs. C, I think the wall just glitched. Glitched? 
Like, it just shorted out quick and then became the wall again. Everybody out! Now! <laughs> and what's happening? Everyone on the ground, lay flat! We're being done! <laughs> hey! Whose hand is in my pocket? <laughs> of course it's not you, Kuma. Well, it's not me! Oh, wait. <laughs> Hold on, my eyes are adjusting. Looking around, Mrs. Claus sees all three are trapped inside a prison cell. Light from a stairway straight ahead seeps into the otherwise dark room. Help me! Help me, Mrs. Claus! Princess Nira, we're down here! <laughs> Who's there? The steps grew closer, and the cackles grew louder until the black figure turned the corner and stepped into the light. The lithe, slithery frame of the Countess Giasta Tallura, known throughout the galaxy as the nefarious Scarlet Jade. Oh, please, Mrs. Claus, you're my only hope. I'm just a poor little princess. <laughs> and you fell right into my trap. You fools! You do good egg fools! <laughs> dun dun dun! Oh no! What will become of our fearless trio? What does this Scarlet Jade want with Mrs. Claus and the Orsonians? And will Kuma remember to take a bath? All these questions and more will be answered in our next episode of Evil Wears a Green Dress, a Mrs. Claus story. Wears a Green Dress, a Mrs. Claus story. Episode 2, Felice Navidad. Dateline, an unknown prison cell. What began as an innocent trip to the Andromedan Lily Festival has taken a turn for the worse for our three intrepid heroes. Answering the distress call of Princess Naira from the planet Orsonia turned out to be a trap laid by the nefarious no goodnik Countess Giasta Tallura, also known as the Scarlet Jade. As Mrs. Claus, Lyric, and Kuma entered the princess's room, they were transported to a dark prison cell in parts unknown. They now stand face to face with their captor as she gloats over her prey. We join our heroes already in progress. Let us out, Jade, while my rage is still at a low simmer. I may even give you a head start up the stairs. Oh, I don't think so, Mrs. Claus. I have so much work to do still. I can't have you interfering again. We don't want another Kordos 82883 when you squashed my last grand scheme and left me for dead. Maybe a plasma slug will help convince you. Oh, I'd be careful with your shot. These bars are veronium coated and surrounded by an ion repulsion field, so it's nigh impenetrable. Oops! <laughs> Lyric! What? I had to try, right? I mean, she's a bad guy. Bad guys lie and stuff? Then perhaps I'm lying about the tiny jolts running through the bars, just waiting for any wandering fingers. Go ahead, give them a grab. No thanks. Mouth shut, eyes open, Lyric. Yeah, yeah, MSEO, I got it. Where's the Princess Jade? She's a little tied up right now. And the rest of the people and animals that disappeared? What did you do to them? <laughs> All in good time. You'll never get away with this, Jade. <laughs> with what? Imprisoning you? I already have. Or kidnapping the princess and her planet's life force? Check and check. Or totally rocking this green dress? Check, check, and check. Now... If you'll excuse me, these plans aren't going to evil themselves. But I'll be back later, my dearies. Toodles. Dibs on killing her. Dibs called it. And get in line. But one thing at a time. First step is breaking out of here. How? <laughs> I feel it too, Kuma. We're aboard a ship. Probably low orbit. <laughs> no, we can't risk touching these bars. But I have an idea. Lyric, your compact mirror. 
Here you go. It'll never work. Who was that? Another prisoner? Across the room, a cobalt blue alien with eagle-eyed features sits up. He runs his hand through a wild thatch of white hair and gets comfortable on a very uncomfortable cot. Prisoner? Ha! I let myself get caught. All part of my elaborate, many-sided plan. Is that so? How many sides? Many. And always growing. That's what makes it so... elaborate. And don't think I haven't tried all the tricks to get out of here, but for yucks, what is your plan? None of your business. Ah, but I disagree. We're both residents of the same prison. Perhaps a little mutual friendship can help in taking our mutual enemy down. I don't even know who you are. Nor I you. But don't worry, we'll have plenty of time to get to know one another down here. How long have you been down here? Good question. Longer than you? Time does funny things in the dark. You'll see. Sorry, but we're getting out of here. You say that, but you have no idea how pleased she was setting that trap for you. You're not escaping anytime soon. I am if I have to keep listening to you. Now me, on the other hand, I'm two shakes of a Malacquar's tail from leaving. Maybe if you're extra nice, I'll help you out. And just how are you escaping? Shh. It's a surprise. If you're so confident, how'd you get caught in the first place? I was a victim of outrageous misfortune. I had successfully infiltrated her defenses to acquire information on what the Countess had been planning and carefully, stealthily, got caught by a sentry droid. How unfortunate. This villain abducted half my kingdom along with the crown jewel, a ten-pound Zuvin Quartz fragment. Ten pounds is a fragment? They can be as big as a hundred pounds. And are served as a power conduit for most of the kingdom's circulated air and electricity. We're on auxiliary, but it can't keep up forever. So I went off to find it. And her. And my people. And got yourself caught. Same as you, miss... You? <laughs> Good one. Goodness! And locked in here with a beast? The Countess really is sadistic. This beast is with us, so best watch your mouth. Now, if I can just position this mirror and aim this ion beam to that fuse box... You did it! Well, mostly did it. We're still locked in. Not for long. Hold on, just let me fidget with it. Gotcha. Wow, that was easy. You were saying about your elaborate, mini-sided plan? You're always good to. So, can you please let me out? I mean, I can help. Plus, I can't imagine the Countess will be too pleased when she sees that empty cell. Aw, he's right, Mrs. C. Can we keep him? He is pretty cute. <sighs> Fine. Let him out. But he's your responsibility. Many thanks. You won't regret it. Why do I not believe you? Shoot, this one's tricky. Kuma, a little help. <laughs> The direct approach. Very good. Thank you. And you, madam. Allow me to introduce myself. Gisen Musar, Don Marqueso, envoy of the sixth moon of Gurg, and first sword to the Duke of Mberberzefwager. That's a mouthful. C can we just call you G? Well, I suppose you could. Although many in my culture would consider it a grave insult to my ancestors and forebears of the name and title, but... Great, G it is. I'm Lyric, and that's Kuma, and Mrs. Claus. Mrs. Claus? So the stories are true. True enough. Gisan Musar Don Marqueso, envoy to the sixth moon of Gurg, and first sword to the Duke of Mbaboozafogger. We can exchange pleasantries later. For now, we have a princess to save. 
I don't suppose you have an extra firearm for me? I'm quite handy with them. You can be handy with your hands until we trust you a bit more. Just stay close. Everyone, stay close. And look out for the sentry droids and laser maze. The what? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Just a few countermeasures. Please, do lead on. The sterile white hallways stretched in both directions, with no distinguishing markers as to where the command center or even the vending machines were located. Following Giesen's directions, Mrs. Claus led the party through several twists and turns, occasionally pausing and listening for the heavy metal footsteps of the sentry droids. Keep moving. Wait. Nice shooting. I could have done that too, but... Whatever. All right, everyone move. Right around the corner is the laser maze. We'll need to get past it to access the control center and the campus. Ooh, it's pretty. And every beam is plasma charged. It'll take a trained acrobat or someone who knows the grid to traverse it. Acrobat, you say? Be careful, Lyric. (laughs) You kidding? This will be fun. What follows is a series of fantastical twists, turns, jumps, and slides as Lyric uses her prowess to traverse the maze of lasers that sadly makes for a terrible radio. Passing the final beam, she turns a knob, powering down the grid. Ha! Jumanji! Take that, maze! Great job, Lyric! Yeah, impressive. Get down! Hey, my gun! Stop him! Whoa! You shot at Mrs. Claus! Bye, not at! I saw that sentry sneaking up! Don't worry, these claws are on my throat! They're thanks enough! Kuma, let him go. Uh, thanks. And my gun? Here you go. And thank you. Think nothing of it. That was the same one who caught me before. Maybe. Who knows? They all look the same. But check his arm. There should be some kind of security card to get to the CC. It'll be around the hallway. Swiping the ID card from the fallen droid, the party turned one more corner and found themselves at a large metal door. Taking a deep breath, Mrs. Claus scans the card through the reader, the door sliding open effortlessly. Guns drawn, they enter the room, ready for anything. What they find among the rows of consoles and deactivated teleporter is... An empty room. Empty, except for a single chair and a single purple princess tied to it. Oh, tied up. I get it. Princess, are you okay? Thank you. Where is that vile woman? Untie me, I'll wring that green little neck of hers... Did you find her? No record of vital signs except for the five of us. Disabling ship defenses, now. Hey, you were right. We're on a ship, a Maxim class frigate above Orsonia. How did we miss her when we dropped out of FTL? Optic stealth, it comes standard on all models. I should have run a multi-spectrum scan. Any record of recent departures? Docking bay doors opened five minutes ago. Looks like she got away. Nothing on the sensor. She would have jumped by now, the brigand. The coward fled when she saw you escape from your cell and sent word for her harvesting ship to return her to her base. This vessel, I think, is the flagship for our royal armada. She must have hijacked it after absorbing the poor souls aboard. (laughs) Was that directed at me? She asked if you have any idea where her base is. Sorry. It's okay. We'll find her. Lyric, anything from the surface? Still nothing. No readings coming from anywhere. There won't be. She laughed about wiping my planet clean. There's still a chance some got away. But all those poor Orsonians who didn't make it? We'll see to it she's brought to justice. First, we need off the ship. Can we land it? No dice. She shorted out the navigation console. This thing's a floating paperweight. (laughs) The teleporter? Sure, with some rewiring. Hey, G, know your way around a QX7 console? I'll need an extra set of hands. Certainly. I do know a thing or two about a thing or two. Princess, I'm sorry for any anguish you were put through. We'll get you home soon. 
Can you tell me what happened? I was in my chambers, going over some decrees, when the sky turned a pink hue. As I looked out the window, I saw a pink mist creeping across the horizon. As the people stopped to look up, they started to stretch toward it. When the first few disappeared, there was a panic. A short-lived one, as the rest soon followed. Just flip and gone. I tried to run to the distress beacon to tell any remaining citizens to hide, but then a bright pink light shot through my window, freezing me in place. The last thing I remember is that woman's laugh before waking up tied up to a chair, watching as she removed the Zuvin quartz pendant across my neck. Zuvin quartz? Did she say what she had planned with it? No, just that it would help once it joined with the others. That crystal has been passed down through five generations. I will have it back. Oh, and she really had it in for you, too. I listened as she synthesized my voice to create that fake distress call. I am so sorry. It's not your fault, Highness. And I promise we'll return your pendant to you. That pink cloud is exactly what happened on my planet. I only just escaped thanks to my wrist teleporter. How convenient. I agree, but convenience aside, it would seem the Countess is planning something sinister with these Zuvin crystals. Lyric, is the teleporter prepped to send us back to Orsonia? Yep, we're ready to rock. All four of us. Five. Four? What about your wrist thingy? You'd think I'd still be here if I had it. It was taken when I got caught. And, unregardless, you'll need all the help you can get. Along with helping Lyric rewire the teleporter and saving your life earlier, you need my help to take down the Scarlet Jade. I didn't become First Sword by being a nice guy, but I'm also quite a nice guy. I know 11 languages and the royal etiquette and protocol for most of the surrounding systems. I know people. I know how to get places. And I know how to find her main base. Okay. But first sign, I think you're someone you're not. Or if I think you're putting my friends in jeopardy, I'll have Kuma space you. I doubt she'll lose much sleep over it. No, I suppose she won't. You've got yourself a deal. I thought so. Okay, everyone ready? Lyric, engage. Everyone here? All here with minimal molecular scrambling. This looks to be my room. Thank you again, Mrs. Claus. I must now search for any survivors. Can we help at all? No, thank you. I can activate the beacon to call any citizens to the palace. We'll regroup and move on from there. But please, return my people and my pendant. You have my word, Princess. We won't let this crime go unpunished. The Scarlet Jade will taste my boot heel before I'm done with her. I thank you. When we come back, I want to hear about this battle of Renton Tinberry, okay? <laughs> Deal. Now go. I'll be okay for now. We should get moving. Rosie will still be in the courtyard. Rosie? Oh, your ship. You weren't worried about anyone or anything taking it against its will? Biomorphic security. Rosie's in a hypergravity lock until I put my hand on her. The planet could fall away and she'd still be right here. No. Oh, well, let's hope it doesn't come to that. Now, let's roll. The BBs? Seems like our best option. The bar on LV4. I love that place. How have I missed your charming figure there before? Guess I'm just lucky. Ha, yes, so you are. Tell me, is there a Mr. Claus? Yeah, I'm a Mrs. Of course there's a Mr. Claus. And if you ever forget that again, I'll feed you to the sandworms of Forks 1X. Small piece by small piece. I'm sure I can find plenty of those on you. Apologies. I know precious little about Terran titles. (laughs) Yeah, right in his sleigh bells. What did she say? You don't understand bear, Mr. Eleven Language Playboy? Okay, let's go. The clock is ticking. I call the radio. Hope you like DIY Nerdcore. I didn't understand a single word you just said. 
MC Chris aside, it was an otherwise peaceful ride to Babidi's, a galactic dive bar perched high atop the swamp planet LV4. Drinks are cheap, and so is the decor. But when Mrs. Claus needed a place to wet her whistle or get the lowdown on information, there was no finer place in the quadrant. As Rosie touched down, the four jumped out and were greeted by a giant horse fly in a dirty red suit, who opened the door for them. Thanks. The usual table will be fine. I'm going to the bar. Check our news sent down the pipeline and order a blue ruin. You three, behave. That's okay. I didn't want anything. Actually, I do need to use the little alien's room. I'll be right back. Uh, thanks for that. Look at these people. I know, right? What is it about alien fashion that just looks so tacky? Check that guy out. No, uh, behind the forearm guy. The one in the clear plastic suit. Those brown fleshy scales are not breathing well underneath it. Where's Sean Connery's getup from Zardoz when you need it? <laughs> oh, snap. Yeah, no worse than that Corpish wedding. No amount of lace in the galaxy could pretty up that ride. <laughs> Kuma, look. In the far corner. Who's G talking to? Yeah, he looks hella shady. Like, he literally just came out of the shade. Wait, is he looking over here? I knew we shouldn't have trusted him. He's selling us out. Okay, I didn't know we shouldn't have trusted him. I have a thing for blue skin, guys. Just shoot, and Mrs. C is all the way over there. Looks like it's you and me. Standard flanking. I'll take point. You move on my signal. Secure G first. Creepy shadow guy, second. Ready? If this is true, we're that much closer. Oh, for the Legion. You think she suspects anything? My aunt. But we must act quickly. Agreed. Yo, what's up? Who's the short, dark, and handsome friend? What? Now. <laughs> hey, let go. What are you doing? See ya. Hey, where'd your friend go? He's a shadow walker. You won't find him again. <laughs> Yeah, what were you talking about? You double-crossing us? What? Of course not. I was getting information. Fishy at best. You know what I call two sketchy people being sketchy in the dark corner of a sketchy bar? (laughs) No, sketchy. And sketchy ain't too good for your longevity. Wait! Wait, what's going on? G was singing about us being here. Kuma and I saw him take something from a shadow alien before it disappeared. Probably to send a 50 megaton present our way, courtesy of the Scarlet Jade herself. If I can explain. Please do. I was meeting one of my contacts for information on the Countess. News of if any more planets had been affected, and the location of our moon base along with schematics for the defense mine grid surrounding it. What you likely saw me take was a data credit from an Umbrian scout who risked his safety to bring this to me on such short notice. And if we don't believe you? Then you don't believe me. I go out the front door and not the good way, and you take on her defense grid and numerous heat-seeking missiles blind, provided you can even fight it. And we both die. The end. I'm not a fan of that story. I prefer happy endings. And how do you know all this? The galaxy is a big place. Information makes it a smaller place. And it didn't come cheap. And what other planets did your contact say have been hit? Snarvis 5AS, Aslov, and Thormian Guspax. All three with Zuvin Quartz. <sighs> He's right. Lex said the same thing when I talked to him. <laughs> yeah, why not just tell us you're meeting Shady McSketcherton? How did I know I could trust you? It works both ways. Maybe I should just take my plot logistics and go home. Or should I save your life? Again! Would that prove my trustworthiness? We're sorry, Geeson. You have been nothing but helpful and flirtatious since we crossed paths. Thank you. Now you mentioned something about the base location and a minefield. I did. 
and it's all on this data cred. Then I guess we should analyze it and figure out how we take this space bitch down. Come on, let's head to the back. Behind an innocent stack of plutonium oyster cracker boxes in the dark recesses of the bar, Mrs. Claus pushes the wall, which slides open at her touch. Lights flicker on, revealing a small room containing a hollow table in the middle and three walls lined with every type of firearm this side of the caster belt. What is this magnificent place? Think of it as my home away from home. If you'll input that data cred into the table, we can pull up the schematics. Here we have a layout of B6399. A desolate, class 2 planet devoid of life. It houses three moons, the smallest of which, Sessa 2-3, is where the Scarlet Jade is based. Enhance. Enhance. Uh, Geeson, it's not voice activated. Let me, uh, just, here. Thank you. So, <clears throat> Using a cold gamma refractor, the Countess's base is practically invisible to sensors. But not to you. Like I said, I pay dearly for this information. Now, as you can see, Sessa 2-3 is in geosynchronous orbit with the planet and has an orbital period of four Gergen days. The minefield around her base is held in place by a gravitational lock and travels with the moon and is motion activated by any incoming spacecraft, as the barren surrounding area allows her to place a wide net of satellites. Our best bet is to jump just outside of the field here and try our luck with a quick direct run to the base. Jumping any closer is inadvisable, as the moon's core is pure palladium, which essentially creates a static discombobulator interfering with incoming FTL coordinates. And the base itself is just a dream within a dream of a giant tortoise that carries the galaxy on its shoulders. Without the proper schematics and course to traverse it, survival is near zero. Does this table have simulation capabilities? Yes, let me activate that. All yours. Thank you. Simulations of a successful run-through blind all come out the same. Observe. That's not a good boom. Inputting the optimal coordinates don't ensure success, mind you. Utilizing plenty of countermeasures and fancy flying, we're looking at a 5% chance of survival. No, that's that's too grim. You've got to be looking at closer to 10%. Rock and roll. What's that? Never mind. But looking at the size of the moon, how is she housing all these absorbed souls? Don't forget about the aminals, too. She's taking all life from the planets. It doesn't make sense. Unless... Unless the Zuvan Quartz plays some nefarious role in it. The energy potential for these pieces as they're combined grow exponentially as they get bigger and bigger. We don't have any more time to hypothesize. But we do have plenty of time to kick some villain butt. All right. All right, settle up. I expect everyone fully armed and ready to go in five. Geeson, that means you. You mean it? Mostly. Stay away from the Venusian railgun. That beauty's mine. Yes, ma'am. Lyric? Prep Rosie for immediate FTL jump to the coordinates just outside the mine grid. Kuma, grab all the creepers and thermal grenades you can fit in the battle satchel. We'll probably need them. I gotta close out my tab with Lex. I'll see everyone at the ship. Good hunting, everyone. Go us! <laughs> Locked, cocked, and ready to rock! With enough firepower to make Swiss cheese of the moon, Mrs. Claus and our heroes are ready to rain down some Terran justice on the Scarlet Jade. Will they survive the harrowing run through her base's defenses? Will they stop her before she carries out her grand evil scheme? And what goes into a blue ruin? Most of these questions, and probably more, will be answered on the exciting conclusion of Evil Wears a Green Dress, a Mrs. Claus story. 
And that's this week's show. Check out all our show notes on sonicsociety.org for Last Act Radio. Join us next week as we celebrate the new year with the final parts of Mrs. Claw's action adventure. Until then, I'm David Alt. And I'm Jack Ward. And have a restful end of 2021, everyone. Amen. <laughs> The Sonic Society is written and produced weekly by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews, and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society by Creative Commons Licensing. The Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks for listening. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. In this time of COVID-19, CDC asks you keep your hands clean. Don't congregate and kindly shelter in place. Also wash your hands and don't touch your face. So use soap and water and grab a clean towel and don't be a Jonah. Prevent spread of Corona by washing your hands. Olay! This was a public service announcement from the Mutual Audio Network.